thank you. So, like Anne said, I'm going to be kickstarting us this afternoon. Myself and Anne are going to be speaking, so you don't have to just listen to my dulcet tones for the, the whole mm-hmm. time that we're on. So, thank you both to Ian and Rachel for having us along, first of all. Really appreciate it. And like Rachel said, we're going to be talking a bit about our Crime Scene Assistant app and how it's been used as a learning tool so far in a number of different academic institutes. And then we're also going to look a bit at um, where we're going to move forward with it, what's going to be coming up for our updates and things like that. So just before we get started, for those of you guys who haven't met myself or Angela before, we're just going to give you a very brief background of who we are and why we're speaking to you today. So. Myself and Ange both met back in Teesside um, while we were studying on a crime scene science degree back in 2005, which feels like a lifetime ago already now. <laughs> um, yes. When we graduated from our degree, we both then went on to work for Northumbria Police as CSIs. So we worked together throughout our time there. Um, throughout our time in the police, we worked on a number of different scenes, all the types of scenes you'd expect, volume right up to major category. Um, we leave. We left the police in 2012 and started our business, CSI training and events. Um, it was an idea that we'd had for a number of years. We love the field of forensics and crime scene. And we said, if we left the practice and field, what would we like to do? We came up with a business idea. And when we left the police, we started that, like I say, back in 2012. Um, we also started doing some disaster response so we signed up for an agency and we are freelance disaster response consultants so we've worked on a number of different international disasters it's mostly been in the air crash industry so far and Angela whilst we were still in the police also went back and did her master's in mass disaster management and victim identification Is that right Ange? Yes Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, that one. So Ange went back and did that as well, just as we were leaving the police, actually, because she likes to keep herself busy. <laughs> <laughs> so when we started the business, um, we do a number of different things. We work in a number of different sectors. So we work in education and deliver educational hands-on workshops. And we go all the way from primary school all the way up to university level. And we've worked across the broad within that. We also run team building events and we run a consultancy service as well where we deliver um, forensic awareness training. Um, So those photographs are just a mixture of some of the things that we've done. We've been very lucky in the the 11 11 and a bit years that we've been running. It's been very varied. Um, Like say, we've worked at all levels of education. We've been nominated for some awards, Best New Business Award. We've won some of those. We've been nominated um, for one of our modules, a simulation module that we ran with Sheffield Hallam Uni. We're, we're mon- um, sorry, we were nominated for an Innovation and Teaching Award with that, which was really lovely. Um, and then, like I say, we've worked in the, de- the disaster response um, arena as well. And the, the top corner there was a, a recognition award for some of the work that we did on one of the disasters we worked on as well. We've also spoke at a number of different conferences. The two on the bottom are some of the ones we've talked at, the Forensic Europe Expo and the UK Association of Fire Investigators. We've spoke at there about some of our forensic awareness stuff as well. So that's a lot of our background. And then we've also been delivering our training to first responders as well across a number of different sectors. And that picture is from us delivering at the College of Paramedics, delivering some of our training there. And that training is kind of where we come on to Crime Scene Assistant. So whilst we've been delivering that training, we've been asked about if it could be online. So we've started looking at how we can produce that in an online format. And we came up with this app idea of how we could get that out in the first instance. So that's our first way of bringing it to the digital market, really. So Crime Scene Assistant, what is it? It's a forensic awareness app, which has been designed to be used as a aid memoir and a learning tool. So it can be used really quickly on the scene if needs be for some quick checkpoints, but it can also be used as a revision tool and a learning tool behind the scenes so that when responders go, they, they already have this knowledge there. 
so it's got some it's got some really quick it's quick and easy to use which is one of the the real assets of it being in an app format and it was designed initially for anyone who can be the first in attendance at a crime scene so obviously our first responders in terms of police paramedics fire but also we thought it was really important to get other responders in there as well so um things like people who are in SARC centres, um, even bouncers, things like that. So anyone who, as part of their remit, could come across crime scenes, really. We also thought it would be great for any students within that arena as well, for any of those um, first responders. And um, so why, why did we decide to do the app? We think this is an important thing to, to talk about. So for us, forensic awareness is massively important, as I'm sure everybody who's within this arena knows. Um, unfortunately, from our experience, it's something that can be really impacted by a number of first responders on the scene. And it's one of those things that if we get it wrong in the first instance, unfortunately, we can't get it back. It can't be rectified. So it's really important that we get it correct from the outset. Um, our experience throughout our work in the in the crime scene field and then even in our disaster response work as well, we found that actually forensic awareness is really lacking across all, all responders really. And it does have a massive impact on the cases moving forward. So it's a real passion that myself and Ange have. Um, so we really, we wanted to focus on that and we think the app's a great way of dealing with this issue. Um, Obviously, a uh, lack of forensic awareness has a massive impact on the investigation and the results that we can get from it. So it has a massive um, implication as well on the, the cost and the efficiency of the service and then the justice that the victims can get from these crime scenes as well. So we know it's a problem that's been identified. Myself and Ange aren't unique in noticing that this is a massive problem in, in this sector. Um, everyone we speak to seems to be experienced in these same issues. And it's not a new issue as well. It's been around for a long time. Um, but unfortunately, the, the response we've had quite a lot to this is so far, all of the evidence about it's quite anecdotal. So people, crime scene investigators can say, yeah, I've been to a scene and I always find this happens, this happens and this happens. But there's no numbers or figures in place for anything to do with kind of the costings of that or how much time that takes. So to kind of counter this and, and, and consider it, we decided that we would actually go ahead and do our own research um, to, to try and get some actual facts and figures rather than just talking about it. So we started a research project last year and I have to say we're still kind of analysing it and pulling it together. And we're hoping to get um, a paper together within the next couple of months, actually, and put it out there and put some of the facts out. So I really just wanted to share some of the summary points today to highlight that it's not anecdotal. And actually, the things we're saying are coming through, in fact. So um, we had two research methods. One was um, we sent out freedom of information requests to all police forces. And the idea behind that was to try and establish the number of scenes that are contaminated per year by frontline responders and also what the cost implications of this were to the force and actually ask the amount uh, uh, ask about the amount of forensic awareness training that's provided to officers to see if there's any kind of correlation between the amount of training they get within force and then the number of scenes that are potentially contaminated. So um, we're still actually waiting for a few of those Freedom of Information Acts to come back, which now, now are actually beyond the legal time frame for FOI responses, but we are still hopefully waiting for them. We have had some contact. But so far, like I say, in summary, we've had um, only four out of 42 forces can actually provide data on it. And there are uh, three of them are not even recording this kind of information or data. So they can't assess that kind of impact but four out of 42 could provide the data and the information we got from that was actually quite significant and also really interesting. Um, from the rest of the forces that uh, we've had response for, and like I said, we're only waiting for three more out of all 42, so it's not too bad. Um, the rest of them couldn't actually pull the data together within the required time frame within the statutory limitation of freedom of information hours um, because the data apparently was so extensive. 
So for us at this moment, the way that we can interpret it is that that kind of information is that extensive that they can't bring it together yet. So we think there's a bit more work to be done on it. Um, yes, so it's, it's, it's been interesting pulling this together so far. Then the second method was CSI surveys. We sent the survey out to um, CSIs nationally. And again, we've had some interesting findings back and we're still analyzing this data, but we have some summary findings for a few of the questions to share today. So 62% of um, senior investigators that responded believe that forensic awareness is poor amongst frontline officers. So it's this graph here, this chart, we've got 62% who think it's poor, we've got 5% who think it's very poor, and zero that think it's very good, such a limited number that think it's good. And also what we're finding is that the CSI role is significantly impacted by a lack of forensic awareness by frontline responders. So um, we have 45% of CSIs saying that they're impacted daily and 33% saying they're impacted weekly. So it is having quite a significant impact on the roles that the CSIs are undertaking. And this one was quite shocking to us because we asked on average how many hours per week do you spend dealing with a scene that hasn't been appropriately preserved? And we kind of expected it probably to be around the 30 minutes, one hour mark. As you can see, there's quite a lot of data up this end with 12% saying 10 plus hours, which is quite a significant amount in a week for any CSI to be being impacted by a scene that hasn't been appropriately preserved. So I think we probably all agree that's quite concerning. When we looked at it, I think it was 3.3 hours on average that, that um, CSIs were spending weekly. Um, dealing with scenes that hadn't been appropriately preserved. And then we asked how often are you requested to attend a scene where there's little forensic potential because the office has limited forensic awareness. And again, we've got quite big figures here. So weekly, 38% and daily, 33%. Now, as I say, we haven't finished pulling this research entirely together and we just wanted to give some summary findings. So we can say, you know, it's not just anecdotal. We're not just talking from our experience anymore. Actually, we've got some research that's coming together that is supporting what we're saying and why, you know, the reason behind why we launched the app is so important. We feel that even though we've done this research, there's actually still loads more to be done um, and that potentially there could be some interesting project work for students here. And that's something that we're really interested in. So if any of you academics out there um, have any students that might be interested in running some projects on forensic awareness, we'd be really um, over the moon to kind of be involved in that and also would be happy to, to externally supervise if that's something you guys would be interested in. Okay, so we now have the research that's kind of compounded and in, um, the compounded why we launched um, Crime Scene Assistant. And we launched it back in June 2020, and we originally launched it um, on the app stores, and it was for individual purpose. When we did that initial launch, we had quite a few people coming in and saying, can you do a licensed version? Is it possible to license it? And we were a bit shocked, and we were like, we think so, we hope so. It, it was an idea that we'd had, but we expected it to be a, fit, a bit further down the line, probably a couple of years down the line, actually. But the demand was, at the time was was great and so we worked really um, hard behind the scenes to launch that um, licensed version in September 2020 so it can now be bought in bulk by institutions um, and we kind of have a tiered pricing system for it as well so when you purchase the the license the longer it's kind of purchased for um, the better the the cost effectively so yeah the from the launch of the app just a few months later we were up and running and ready for that um, academic year which was which was pretty amazing so the licensing process getting from here to here wasn't actually that easy in those few months it was a lot of work and quite stressful and we were thinking how is this even going to work how is it going to operate but as it is um the whole process now we're up and running isn't too difficult at all and the licensing process in itself for people is really easy. 
So people can contact us for information um, regarding the agreement and the pricing structure, which we'll send out. And then it's literally deciding how many students or officer people would like to sign up and then send us a list of email addresses. Once the agreement's been signed and returned to us and a simple payment made, that's effectively it. We do the rest of the work there. We get the students up and running. We send them emails. And if there are any technical glitches or any issues in students getting on, we'll be there and we'll talk directly to students or directly to academics to try and resolve those issues as quickly as possible in one way or another. One of the other things that we've we've been asked to do, we haven't done it yet, actually, it hasn't been arranged, but we've been asked by a couple of people and we are willing to do it is to run introductory workshops for students. So we could run an online um, workshop, discuss the app, how to use it, how to navigate it and the inf information in there and how it can help them. In the same vein, we can also do that with academics, um, discuss how to use the app and the benefits of it. But in addition to that, we, could, we can also um, look at how it can be integrated into learning and how it can be integrated into other workshops. So like I say, that licensing process that we're now into is really easy. And since the launch of CSA Edu and that licensing process, it's actually in eight universities nationally. Katie, you inspired me to use Google Earth here, I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's in eight universities nationally. There's over 1,700 students using it. And it's been used on multiple course types. So it's been used on forensic science courses, forensic chemistry, um, criminology courses, crime scene forensic investigation, and also policing. So that's really great for us because it's been used across a remit of different courses. And the scope for it to be used on a lot of other courses too, which is fantastic. People are using it um, in different ways and have different intentions with it. So some people are using the whole app to build workshops and integrate it into some of the lectures or practicals. Um, other people are just using sections of the app and again, developing workshops uh, around it. Um, and it has also been used internationally in some international training. But not all of the universities that we work with are happy to for us to, to acknowledge them or advertise that we're working with them. And that's absolutely fine. We, confidentiality is key for us. So if people are happy, then we'll, we'll sing about it. If not, we also respect that. So I'm going to take you through um, just a, a few case studies um, from a couple of universities that are happy for us to, to talk about and mention them. So the first one is the University of Strathclyde and uh, Katie who I know is here today she's a superstar and these guys were actually one of our first licensees and I actually blame Katie and Dr Penny Hadrill for forcing us to get this license out by the September. <laughs> um, it was uh, it's really great they were really keen to use it and like I said they're one of our first licensees and Katie's used it to develop a full workshop where she's using um, Google Earth and Crime Scene Assistant. And I believe she's actually done a talk for the remote forensic CSI team about it. So she uses the whole app, I believe, and she, correct me if I get anything wrong here, Katie, but she effectively uh, breaks it down into sections and there's a crime scene scenario which has been set up in Google Earth. And the students use different sections of the app to look at approaches approaching the crime scene and processing it and look also at good and bad practices. So that was developed, like I said, um, in the lockdown. So it was a, as a remote workshop to engage students, but it, I think they found that it worked really well. And after transitioning back to face-to-face, -face, they are actually still running the workshop face-to-face, -face, which is brilliant. And also brilliant for us because uh, Strathclyde recognized the the app you know was not just a great remote tool but also great to be integrated into lectures and practical working face to face again as well and as a result they've been one of the first to buy a long term license which we're really happy about and we're really grateful for for all of their support because they've been amazing um in addition to developing the workshop i know that they also encourage students to use um the app as a checklist and revision tool for both um, an assignment that they'd run in the same module as this 
and for a major outdoor crime scene that they run as well, which is brilliant. And Katie just said recently, she sent me this the other day, that it's a great and portable way for students to keep track of the tasks and processes that they should be undertaking at the scene. So I think this is a really great way of um, looking at how the whole app has been incorporated into a full workshop. The next one is Anglia Ruskin, and again, I think Charmaine's here today, and again, she's another star. These guys have been um, licensing for two years now, and they license across all of their learners, level four, five, six, and seven, which is fantastic. But I believe they've been using a section of the app and using it mainly around documentation. So ARU have actually um, changed and developed. I think Charmaine's been working on it and um, changing their crime scene report forms and documentation so that it actually matches with the local force and the outs and the, the real world effectively. And um, so that's what their students are using now. And what Charmaine said to us is that the app's been really great. And what's in our kind of app and the documentation section reflects that. And it's been a really useful tool for students. So they're being directed to use it when completing any documentation. Um, when completing any work tasks and also as a research and revision tool. So they've been um, encouraged to use it as an independent resource once they've been given the, the app themselves. We we're actually just integrating some of it for a couple of the learners um, in, in January and there were a couple of issues with for a couple of students. So we got them sorted out as quickly as possible. We were chatting backwards and forwards with a couple of the students. And I managed to get one up and running and she came back to me and said that uh, she'd managed to get on OK and she really appreciated what we'd done and that she'd managed to have a flick through and a look through the app. And she thought it looked absolutely awesome and it was going to help a lot. So we were really over the moon because it's always nice to get kind of that feedback from students as well as academic staff as well. So, yeah, another great one. Now this one, we thought it'd be a little bit remiss of us if we talked about other people using the app in, in their teaching, but that we don't use it ourselves. So this case study is actually where we've integrated it into, into teaching. And we do it for a number of different lectures and we've used it in a number of different ways. But this is just one example. So we've been working with Sheffield Hallam University now for, for 10 years on a module that we helped develop and run. Um, and when we were, actually went into lockdown and just launched this, we, we took um, the opportunity to integrate the app as well to get a bit more engagement online, a bit like Strathclyde. And then it's worked really well as well. So we, we still use this. But effectively, they have a crime scenario that they work on and they start off at the crime scene and they move all the way through to the courtroom. But they recover a series of different evidence from the crime scene. So a couple of weeks later, we come to looking at um, the suspect and who we have in custody and recovery of samples. And we split the students off into working groups um, and we get them to consider what evidence they've got at, from the scene and then use the app looking at um, intimate and non-intimate samples and think about a custody strategy in terms of what we might recover from the suspect, what, what's going to be really useful and what level of consent we need for those samples as well. And we get them to come back and we have group discussions about that and then think about a submission strategy as well, what we're going to send off from the scene and from our suspect and what might best drive the investigation. So yeah, we do actually use it ourselves as well. <laughs> we just thought that was important to say. Um, and then last one, we won't bleat on too much, but the last one is the international um, case study that we want to tell you about. Now this was for an organisation uh, that needs to stay anonymous, but the, it was basically um, an international sex, sexual offences training and um, they used the full sexual offence as part of the app. So again, somebody's taken and used a section of the app and developed and delivered training using the content and the information. So the training was sexual and gender-based violence in a humanitarian context. And when it was developed, it was also developed in line with the Istanbul Protocol. And apparently um, the feedback that we had is that the app is and the information in there is really quite similar to the Istanbul prot Protocol and compliant. And that training was delivered to um, various audiences, including NGOs, um, police investigators, 
police university lecturers and medical legal investigators. So we were really pleased because we were, we were overjoyed with the feedback that we had because they said that it had been such a great help in developing the, the training itself and the content had been a godsend. So that was great for us. And as I say, it was delivered over a couple of presentations to approximately 150 participants. Okay, so there's just a few case studies there about how the app has been used and how it's been integrated and the different ways in which it can be used, whether it's the whole app or just sections of the app to develop content. We think that it brings um, a lot of real benefits to the students because we know that students basically they're never off the phones. In fact, not just students. I think most people these days seem to be addicted to the phones. And it's a digital learning tool that's there at their fingertips in their hand all the time. A lot of the information that's in the app is information that you'd be finding in textbooks. We used a lot of textbooks. When we were students, we didn't have the joy of apps in the same way. This is much handier than a textbook with the information that's condensed. But in addition, it's also regularly updated. We're just about to do some updates which I'll discuss and it will be continually updated um, and kind of moving on from that it is also in line with the FSR regulations so learning is current um, in addition it can be used in a practical setting so hopefully a lot of the crime scene investigation um, courses in particular have a lot of practical elements it's a really good checklist for them when they're going through the practicals to make sure they've approached the scene in the right way, make sure they're processing in the right way. And it's also really easy to access and navigate. So again, it can be utilized in all learning environments. And I think um, as pointed out, it can be a great revision guide too. So there's quite a lot of benefits there to students, but I think for academic staff as well, there are quite a few, quite a few benefits. So it, I think useful resource to aid and develop aid the development of learning materials and great for virtual and practical environments. I think that the case studies that we've that we've just talked about and been through kind of highlight that and show how they're great benefits. It is a new way of engaging students. Like I say, it's on the phone, the things that they're addicted to. Um, but I think it also supports and embeds learning and shows consistency of approach and process, it kind of alleviates that need for an academic to constantly be um, reiterating processes. Uh, I found myself uh, when I'm, I've been lecturing that I might discuss the process of approaching a crime scene and examine it. And there's still some uh, misunderstanding or things go out of order with the app they've got that consistency of approach and process they can see it it's always there so in theory it should alleviate um academic staff a little bit from going over stuff like that and um in that way potentially increase the performance of students and it also allows them to explore potential related kind of fields in forensics the app goes through um medics fire officers and other responders and also talks about SARC centres in there as well. So we've got information for fire investigators, the SARC centre information, and it also just lets them look at other fields that come across forensics and how it might be related as well. Okay. I don't know if Dee got back on there, but I'll just carry on. So what we've got coming up is some updates to content. Um, We've had the app out for a couple of years now, and we gave it to a number of people in the field that are current um, and still practicing. And we got a lot of feedback. We know there's been a lot of changes with regards to the ISO standards and accreditation and the FSR regulations. So we waited for a while and got um, relative feedback coming into us about the app. Uh, we have made some changes. One of the biggest changes coming is probably to sexual offences in the police's section. We are effectively pulling it out and giving it its own section, a bit like we have done in the medic, but with a lot more data and information. And we have changed a number of different things, um, wording, and we are putting some additions in there. So it was pretty compliant with the FSR regulations, but now we've gone through and kind of um, dotted the I's and crossed the T's, so to speak, to make sure that is um, particularly when it comes down to um, anti-contamination. 
um, we have made sure that it is in line with that and also the, some of the College of Police in advice as well. And then I guess the biggest thing is new content that's coming up, which we are really excited about, we're over the moon about. It's going to be our first add-on section and we're hoping the first of many because we do have a number of ideas um, and we are in talks with a couple of other people, which again is quite exciting, but this is the first confirmed and definitely moving forward. Um, and it's our first collaboration. So again, we're really excited about it. And the updates to content and the first add-on will be coming, we're hoping by the end of March, potentially a bit sooner, but we're saying end of March. Um, and yeah, these will be getting inserted into the app along with the add-on and there's gonna be no additional charge or fee. So it'll be there in CSA Edu for everyone to use. So the new add-on is in um, conjunction with Sana, a lecturer from Sheffield. As you know, we've mentioned a few times, we've been lecturing at Sheffield Hallam for a number of years now. And Sana joined from Manchester uh, maybe two years ago. And we, we met Sana and we were, you know, chatting about our backgrounds and our experience and also her background and her experience and her PhD research, which was about... Um, cultural awareness, equality, diversion, diversity and inclusion for frontline responders. And we were like, okay, we've got this app that's designed for frontline responders and raising forensic awareness. And actually you're wanting to raise awareness about EDI for frontline responders as well. And there was a real synergy there and we were really excited about it. And, she, and we said, you know, would you like to put some content in the app? And Sana was over the moon because she didn't want her PhD research kind of just, I guess, disappearing into the ether and she's really happy and excited for it to be um, put into a practical context and obviously be put out into the real world and put into learners' hands as well. So um, that was fantastic. And the other thing is we know that it's such a current topic and one of such significance at the minute nationally and internationally around the world. This topic is... Um, is at the fore really and we know ourselves from working both nationally and internationally some of the obstacles some of the um, issues that you can come across whether advertently or inadvertently when working in such a diverse society and one of the things that San said was that being um, culturally aware is so important for a first responder in earning the trust of the public and we were just like yeah it really you know it really resonated so we kind of got to work on it and sam said would you be happy for us to um, bring in robert dover as well he's the head of school of criminology sociology and policing at the university of hull and i believe he worked with sana on a project he may have been her um project tutor i might not get that exactly right but the the two of them have, have worked together and we just said most definitely they, they have such expertise in this area and we obviously have the app and it's a way for us to collaborate nicely and and roll it out and bring it and hopefully something else that is really going to um, help frontline responders in their work and in their daily work. So I'm not going to say too much about the content of it because we're probably going to do something with SANA as we approach launch, but um, the content is effectively going to cover best practice advice when dealing with minority groups, legislation that people should be working under and just making them a bit aware of the legislation and then useful definitions and information as well. So yeah, we're really excited about that, as I say, looking forward to it. Right, I'm going to shut up in a second. We're almost at the end. I just wanted to say, that um, if you want to see a demo of CSA Edu, um, the way it navigates, the way you move through it, it is on YouTube. This is our YouTube channel, and this link here would take you directly to CSA Edu and how to navigate it and how it works. And then lastly, I just wanted to reiterate that I think that there's quite a bit more um, work to do around forensic awareness and projects and potentially interesting projects for students. We have a couple of ideas that we'd be keen to kind of progress um, that would incorporate potentially the app. So again, if you have any students that you think may be interested in that, then that would be fantastic. And again, we will be happy to be external supervisors. 
if anyone would be interested in that. So I am going to shut up now and say thank you for listening. Um, I hope I didn't bombard you too much. And yeah, happy to take any questions.